Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's MikeBad96 here with Tech Time. Today I will be giving you guys a review and a uh, guide on how to use iBooks. Now iBooks comes pre-installed on the iPad and then you could get it on the iPod Touch or iPhone if you have the new iOS 4.0 operating system and I have a video out on how to get that operating system so just look that up and you can get the new operating system if you have an iPad like I said the app is already pre-installed now if you have the iOS 4.0 operating system on your iPod touch or iPhone you need to get iBooks from the App Store and I'll show how to do that so on your iPod, as you can see, I'm already, I'm already running the iOS 4.0. I'll pull up the information. It says version 4.0. So what you're going to need to do, you're going to need to go to the App Store. Go to search and type in iBooks in the search bar. It'll be the first result if you type it all in. And it, you, can, you can see that it's free to download. So just click on free, it turns into an install button. Click on install. And now, you just need to, it may prompt you for your iTunes password. So you just need to enter in your iTunes password and click OK. Once you do that, it will bring you back to your home screen. And iBooks will say loading. Alright, and so now iBooks is done installing. And so I could go into the iBooks by tapping it. immediately prompts me if I want to sync bookmarks. It says, do you want to store your bookmarks and notes in your iTunes store account for syncing across devices? Well, I only have one device. That's my iPod Touch. But I guess this would be useful if you had an iPod and an iPhone or an iPhone and an iPad or something like that. Um, so it's up to you. I'm just going to click sync because I don't see why not. That, that's probably really helpful if you have more than one device. And I also see I have one book, and it's Winnie the Pooh. The Poo. And so I can open that book by tapping it. And I've seen this there. I've seen other people have gotten this error. I think it's just a um, a bug in the iPad, iPod slash iPhone version of this app. It isn't the first time I've seen it, and I've seen other people get it too. But I found if you click OK, and then try opening up the book again, it'll work. And so here's the book. You can begin reading it. You just slide your finger across the screen to turn the pages any direction you want. If you tap on a page, you get more options. First at the top, we see a library button. That brings you back to your bookshelf. Also, it looks like a picture of a list. If you click on that, you can view the table of contents of the book. Here's the table of contents. You also view where you have bookmarks. And so I, I have a bookmark in chapter one. And if you click on that bookmark, it will go right to that page. The next option is brightness. 
It's really nice that they integrated a brightness setting right within the app. Instead of having to go back to settings and change the brightness to where it's comfortable. So if you just click on that sunshine, you can move the slider, change your brightness. There's also text settings. I can make the text smaller. Or I can make the text bigger. I can also change the font of the text. I can also change the background of the paper. And this will be kind of hard to see on the camera. But it does change the color of the background to a sepia color. next option is search. I can search for a word within the book. For example, I'll type in Winnie and then click on search. And it'll list every instance of the word Winnie in the book. And if I tap on one of those instances, it'll bring me right to the page and it'll highlight the word. next option is a bookmark. We saw these earlier in the list um, option. I can click on the bookmark. It will become bigger in red. I can exit the app then and then go back to the app later. Maybe read another book if I had one. And I can go back to the book Go to the lists, bookmarks, and there's my second bookmark. It's also a nice feature that you get more than one bookmark. And again, if I tap on it, it will bring me right to that page. I can remove the bookmark by tapping on the bookmark again. Now the bookmark is removed and no longer shows up in my bookmarks list. On the bottom, there's page options. This slider will bring you to different chapters and different pages. As you see, it's very sensitive because there are a lot of pages. I can easily search for a certain page and I'll go right to it. It'll also say page you're on and how many pages are in the book. And then down here it tells me how many pages I have left in the chapter. So I can go all the way down until I reach a zero. And then that's a new chapter. Now, you can highlight and put notes on pages. Say I want to do highlight the word turned. I could double click it and I could click on highlight. If I click on it again and click on colors, I could choose the color that it's highlighted. If I click on it again, I can remove the highlight. Now if I double click the word and then I select note, I can type a note and then click on done. The word is then highlighted and a note is put over here on the right. If I click on that note, it'll enlarge and I can read it. I can remove the note by tapping on the word and then clicking remove note. There's also a dictionary.